Welcome back everyone and today we're going to do some more particle effects. I found this really neat uh, tutorial online from CFN and it's primarily about billboards which we've done before but um, this tutorial if you go through it you probably should you can learn some uh, new things from someone else. Uh, it shows you a new blending mode and um, which kind of just adds up the colors instead of um, blending them through an alpha state and um, it teaches you uh, how to animate uh, sprites, you know, because he uses this an, an atlas and then uh, divide it up into small pieces. So in this lesson, I want to do something like this. Um, since the world that we use is white, the blending mode to create this effect won't work because this blending mode requires the world to be um, dark and black ends up being kind of like a transparent color. It's like an alpha of zero. So like this effect, the way it looks is pretty, but only works in dark environments the way it's programmed. So we're going to try a different way. We're going to do alpha blending, but it won't be able to, we can't create that effect in a white world, um, it really. So I'm going to try shooting for like smoke or kind of like a black flame type of thing. So we're going to use, we're going to redo this and um, we're going to, I'm going to take this a step further. I'm going to shut this down before WebGL crashes because it already crashed and I had to restart this recording. Um, and, you know, I made it a grayscale. So I take that texture made it into a grayscale so we can have a mask. And why do I want a mask? It's because I want to have, because I, I really don't care about the colors because I'm going to do the coloring myself. So I'm going to use this kind of as a blueprint of where all the pixels are. So I can redraw these basically any way I want it. So, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do, we're going to do uh, animated texture masks on a per particle, particle effect. And we're gonna try for smoke or um, kind of a black flame type of thing. So our emitter class hasn't really changed and we're gonna do everything in a single, um, uh, whatchamacallit, in a single, uh, a single shader. We don't need to do two shaders. We don't need um, uh, transform feedback. We're gonna do it all in just one. Um, so we're going to load in our texture atlas and we're going to load in our particle bfire.txt file. Again, you can get all this stuff from GitHub. Um, so, and just, we're going to set up our, our, our particles. It, uh, I don't think too much has, has changed. You know, that's our quad. This is our quad information. And then our particle information, you know, uh, we have a lifespan between 1.5 and 4, 4. 4.5 seconds. That's what we do it here. And for anyone who's into functional program will actually scream at me for this because <laughs> I'm setting up more than one uh, array uh, using a, a functional program. But I didn't want to make two or three. Uh, I didn't want to, you know, I just, I don't know, I didn't want to save myself from making another loop. So excuse me, but, you know, I'm prototyping. I'm not going to be very function functional, uh, nice, whatever you want to call it. So yes, <laughs> anyone that's functional program, I literally will look at this and say, this is bad code. Yes, it is in, in terms of functional programming, but yeah. <laughs> but it's still good because I have one less loop. So I'm just using, they're all the same size arrays anyway. So uh, we'll set up uh, a default starting position that we want our um, particle to exist. Um, uh, just like a CFN's uh, example, kind of makes kind of like a, kind of it tries to make the bottom a little more ballish, so it kind of creates a different offset. So uh, on the Y, it kind of just takes X, divides it by two, and kind of just adds it to Y. So that's why uh, I, I equals one. Um, I, I will 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 change between zero, one, and two, and this gives me the chance to control the X, Y, Z. Uh, components of our offset and our velocity. So that's what II is doing. Uh, in this case, if it's not Y and um, the offset is greater than zero, we want to flip it. Um, if the offset is to the left, we want to move it to the right. If it's offset to the right, we want it to the left. So depending on which side it is from origin, we want to move it in the opposite direction. because so you don't want to be on the left and move it away from the center. So kind of 
kind of creates this, you know, you move it, you move everything away from the center and then you want to move everything kind of toward the center and across. That's kind of how the effect works. And this is our uh, buffer information. Um, offset velocity and lifetime, that's our instance data. Their instance set is true. Uh, vertices and UVs are, are um, just regular vertex stuff that's going to be instanced. Uh, these are the same things from the previous lesson, uh, I believe. <sighs> okay, so most of the work is really just shader. Like now that the you kind of set up our, our our particle information, now is how do we handle it? So we got our shader, um, standard stuff. We're going to be using uh, alpha coverage blending instead of just regular blending. Um, you know, here's our, our attributes. Now, let's see what else we got here. Has have these sets flat. Uh, flat means don't inter uh, interpolate the values. So, as um as the particle is being moved, it doesn't uh doesn't interpolate. Basically, that's that's what all these things are doing. I don't even know if I need Z-pose anymore. Um. So this one, grid size. This grid size is set four, right? The reason why I say four is because of this um, atlas. This atlas is four by four. So the grid size is four. Um, we only care about more like with the width, how far wide we go. So four, and then we just loop that four repeatedly. Uh, so, so it can be four by 10, four by three. It doesn't matter. As long as we get that width, how many times across? Because um, we want to, because if this is a UV um, texture, you know, where you have zero here and one over here, we want to divide this into four pieces. We want to subdivide this. And this is a 256 image, so when you divide these up by four, each cell in our grid equals about 64 pixels. Um, but in UV, it's one fourth. So the grid side is four. Col um, column size is one divided by grid size, which is four, you know, one over four, which is equals uh, 1.25. Um, and then because the, the textures are upside down, kind of, like like I said, uh, zero starts here and one's, and one's up here. Instead of one uh, zero being here, one here, you have to flip the Y. So that's what this does. It kind of just flips the Y for us and inverts it to the top. Okay, so the first thing we do, we were going we we're gonna try to find out what time are we in. So we're gonna use a modulus. So F time is the time since starting that we're pushing into our shader. You know, in the previous lesson, we we I think we added it to our UBO. So if we have time in our lifespan, so lifespan is basically the, the, the max point. So it, it'll just give us the remainder. So it'll always be between zero and the this value that we get the output from. So once we know um, at what point in time, what time is it for this particle in its lifetime, we didn't take that time and divide it by um, its lifespan to normalize it. So we, so we can convert its age essentially into a value between zero and one. Zero and one is a great value to use to do for a lot of things. Um, so the next thing uh, we do is calculate velocity. We want to move the velocity. Um, we're doing it now, but we're going to actually use it later. So velocity is um, just velocity times time and and it's really divided by 0 0.01. Oh my God, people are calling me too early in the morning. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, so this allows you to calculate uh, where, how, like what, this is in, in previous t tutorials we've done velocity where we can just keep building up to it. Um, this is not really it. This is kind of like velocity in this instance is um, the total distance it's going to travel. Oh, actually, no, sorry. I shouldn't say that. 
velocity is how fast it goes, like the, the tiny increments of, of how fast it's supposed to go. And we're going to multiply it by its time. So, so if it's if it goes like uh, like one mile per hour, and the current time of this life stand is like two hours, that means you've traveled. What did I say? Let's say one mile per hour, and it's 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 now at the second hour of its life, and its maximum life is five hours. So one times two means it traveled two hours. So that's how we're doing uh, velocity. So instead of velocity being incremented, we're just gonna take a small increment of velocity and multiply it. So, th so the distance will always be the same. Because um, in previous vi uh, videos, we made velocity random. So we had to use a, a feedback and, and that changed how velocity was calculated. But this one, velocity is always constant for the most part. It, it's based on time and the actual velocity applied to that um, ver um, uh, vertex. But it's a, it's a nice way to do this. So this way you don't need transform feedback or anything else. And it's, it, gets the, it, gets, it gets done. Like if you don't need random, this way is a lot easier. Just take, just make a really small amount of velocity, and then use time. And I just shrink down how much, how much I, I wanted because this goes too fast. I want to shrink it down just a smidgen. Uh, Z position is what position it's going to be at. So, so we got offset, the starting point, times where it's supposed to be, um, after you add velocity to it. Because velocity is basically where it's going to be after all that time of travel. Um, next, we're going to do is we're going to calculate scale. We're not going to use it right away, and um, I'm going to use what the CNN did. He's kind of like he does like kind of an up and down type of. Um, so he, he wants he wants to make it go up a little bit, uh, sh uh, grow a little bit, and shrink a little before you start shrinking. So and he uses a um, a parabola curve. Parabola, yeah, that's saying it correctly. Parabola curve. I think his he did a slightly different. I changed the values around and, and did less. I think I can't remember, but it's it's a simple, simple equation, essentially. That's why ss times each other. It's actually s. It's x squared, and then I just shrink down that value. Um, you might not like. I guess if you don't do math that much or no methodology you might like what, what does this mean Par parabola curve parabola curve I kind of have I have this all set up too um, this is what a parabola curve is if uh, the whole, reason why we're doing he well he why he's doing it and it makes sense it's kind of it's kind of neat is that instead of do, like in previously we've done like a linear uh, progression on things now, if you want, you can do kind of a curve progression. So things look more natural when they're curved instead of a linear. Linear is kind of just, it kind of starts really fast, starts at that speed and stays constant at that speed. Uh, if you use a parabola, it starts kind of slow and as time goes by, it goes faster and faster. So the, 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 in, in, in the instance of scaling, the older it gets, the faster it shrinks. So that's what this equation is, is x2 squared. So whatever y value you put in, you just square it. Or actually, whatever x value is, you square it, and that's your new y value. So, uh, and, you, and if you want to make it, uh, I think, wider, you can, like which, well, probably what I'm doing is times 3. And here's the blue line. So the scale kind of never really makes it to 1. Um, so it's, it's taking longer to um to kind of reach its maximum potential like to get to reach its maximum potential i have to reach like one point what's this six seven eight one point eight seconds or one point eight lifetime to reach this height so so yeah the the max um speed of scale like it, it doesn't scale all the way down to zero it kind of scales down to like this far so if you want to, if you want to make the parabola um, even more narrow, you can do something like one times this. Uh, let's do like times five or do eight. Uh, do nine, I guess. Yeah. So it, so by taking that value, you do by nine, you actually make it happen sooner. So if while it's scaling, or you can do this for um, velocity as well. So you can choose the velocity. It'll, it'll get faster sooner. So before the end of life, uh, before you reach like 
the one value that you're kind of putting in, it's already it's going to be going a lot faster. It's going to be really fast. It's going to be like almost twice the speed of its actual lifetime. I guess if I do it times two, it would be. Yeah, so it hits it exactly right there on two. So when when you when x equals one, y equals two. So that is your parabola. Um, I'm really why I'm going it through with this because it's something I might end up using more often um, to animate so instead of just using a linear. We're going to use more curves. Um, we can also use um, uh, what are the other curves called? Uh, quadratic curves. Uh, I forgot what they're called. We've done them in the past um, to make an editor, but there's like different types of curves where you can. Uh, Benzier curves, that's it, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, either cubic or quadratic uh, Benzier curves. Um, you can do that where you can customize the actual curve. Oh yeah, I forgot, there's another curve you can do. Uh, with this, let's see, let me get rid of this one. One more curve if you want, just for fun. Uh, no, not that one, that's a linear. Uh, to the third power. So this one kind of creates a more flatter curve. And on top of that, it goes um, in a different direction in, in, in the negative zone. So if you're in the negative, it kind of goes in the opposite. So if you do square, it kind of makes a that. But if you a cube it, you do this. So another curve that you can use uh, in your animations. And like I said, this is a, I think it's more narrow. It's slightly more narrow. Like a, the, it, it starts flat more in the beginning. It's, it's, a, it's a harder curve. So if you want like a harder, uh, a much slower um, start, you can kind of cube it. Uh, and what happens if I do... See, now, now that I, I'm there, like, I want to play with it. Yeah, you just make it more narrow. That's the same thing. It's the same the same rules applies to um, par parabola. I, did, I forget the name of this curve. I don't know if it's a sine curve or something. I forget what it's called when you cube it. I forgot. I, I didn't even think about telling you about this one, but yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a long tangent on, on doing some math, but I want you guys to realize that you know this is what's going on. It's a curve. Um, so this way, once you once you can visualize how what the curve looks like, you can kind of manipulate it and use it to change how the animations go in your particles. All right. So so we're going to scale it later, but for now, we're just going to use our position. Because um, the scale, we're just going to make it smaller as it gets older. So this part, we then calculate where in the UV, which cell in the UV, UV we kind of want to do. So we have 16 frames, right? If you go back here, we have 4 by 4 That's We have 16 frames in the animation, right? So we have 16 frames time age. And V age is a value between 0 and 1. So we're saying where in this lifetime, what frame are we currently in? So that gives us our frame. And we do a floor, and it kind of gets rid of um, uh, all of the decimals. Uh, once we know the C value, we can then calculate the X and Y uh, positions for the UV values. Um, and once we have that, it's kind of like the starting point. Um, the idea, the, the 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 points that I'm looking for, uh, I wish I can see it, but like, um, it's like the top left corner. Yes, top left corner. So once we get the top left corner, then we can use um, the U UV, the UV values to kind of get. Um, we can use the the UV values for the vertices to get the the remaining points. So once we get the left top left corner, we can use the UV values to get the top right, bottom, and left, you know, all the corners um, based on the UV. So it's like UV, like let's say if we're doing the, the bottom corner point, that would be zero times cube size, which would be zero. So um, then we have X. So x plus 0 equals x. So that's the bottom right corner. Um, but if we're using the other corner, like if we're currently rendering the bottom right corner, it'll be 1. So it'll be, this will probably equal 0. So this will be equal to 1. And then you have uh, 
column size, which would be 64, or actually it'll be one quarter. So it'll be one times one quarter plus zero, which equals one. So that gives us that x, that uv x coordinate, or the s value, or the u value, u value, what do you want to call it? So that's what's happening here. Is we're just calculating what cell we're in, and then what is the top left corner of that cell, and then this uh, takes that that corner position, and then adds the uv values that exist for this vertex to calc depending like what depending what what vertex this is. Like each each vertex is a corner. So by using that corner value, we add it to the origin. I guess you can call this the origin. So we're just taking origin and we're adding on uh, based on the size of the cell. Um, so that's how we calculate the, the new UV coordinates for that specific cell. Um, and then we're going to use, we have done this before, and this is billboarding. Um, and we're just going to billboard the, the value. And, and at the bottom, and then we're going to go to our fragment shader, and now we're going to just load in our mask. We have the UV value that we passed in from our fragment shader, and that's our mask. So if we go over here, refresh, and that's where we're going. So through lifetime, we're going we're going through every single cell, and um, we're just loading up that specific texture, the, that part of that map. So remember, this is just one texture, and we're going through each cell during the lifetime. So if it's right in the middle of its lifetime, we're like, like maybe around here. So let's go to the other thing. Let's give our let's go need, let's use our mask. Since, since this is a grayscale, this we're using uh, mask textures. We can manipulate things a little bit. So we're going to take the R channel and the R channel, the R. It doesn't matter which channel you use RGB because they all equal the exact same value. So we're going to take the R channel and save it to the A channel, to the alpha channel. So this way, we can then turn anything, uh, essentially anything black becomes transparent. Like the closer you get to black, the more um, opaque it becomes. So as you can see, if you go over here, refresh, we have to refresh empty cache. There we go. There you go. Now it's complete transparent. Well, not complete transparent. It's uh, it's opaque. And this is what, so th so now because like I said, we're not really using the texture to draw. Now we're kind of using the v the data of that specific of each pixel of those those textures to actually start creating our our texture, or our, you know, our pixel stuff. So <laughs> it's too early in the morning, and I haven't been doing this in a while. All right, so. With that out of the way, let's comment this stuff out. Now we're gonna to go to step two. We're gonna start. We're gonna go step by step to building our 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 um, effect. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna invert the mask. We're gonna turn everything white into black and everything black into white. So let me see how how does it look like when I have the alpha blending? Refresh. Now it's invisible. Okay, so I guess it doesn't work that way. I gotta, just gotta use these two. Yes. Refresh. So if I do this, what the hell? What did I screw up on? Oh no, what did I do? Yeah, that's that. Yeah, this should invert it. We should make uh, everything backwards. Why is not doing it? Wow, that sucks. What the hell happened? <laughs> uh, oh no, technical difficulties. I swear this. Okay, there you go. That's the effect I'm looking for. Okay, I guess I needed this to 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 get the job done. Um, so it does invert it. 
I don't know, but I don't, I don't understand. I was, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm a dummy. I should do this so you can see it. Okay. <laughs> I inverted it, but I didn't change the alpha. The alpha, if I invert this, the alpha might, it is one. If I invert it, it becomes zero, and that's why it's invisible. I am sorry. I, I'm, refresh. There you go. See, now you can see that it's white. Right, it's white. I inverted. I inverted the texture, so everything originally the smoky part is is white, and the background is white uh, is black. Like I said, I want to make smoke, or I want to make um, or like a black flame. So by inverting it, we start getting the the black color out of it. Like so, that's the kind of like the beauty of masks. So without this alpha, now we have to customize the alpha state. We want the to be. We want it to be transparent, uh, some parts of it. So we're going to do a smooth step. If the R channel is less than, uh, if it's less than this, it's going to give me a value of zero. So it's going to be completely transparent. So if it's less than this gray color, like very close to black, it's going to be completely transparent. If it's going, if it's anywhere between one and five, like half of the like a half gray it's going to fade between that it's going to create like an um an anti-alias effect right between one and five if it's greater than five it's going to return back a value of one so anything more than half is going to be a solid color and there you go so this way i can get rid of most of the white and keep a lot of the black and keep make the black kind of really um darker so see now we got everything kind of inverted and animating. All right. So I was like step two is getting the inverted color. So step three, we want to play with the colors a little bit. So there's the same equation, but depending on the order. Uh, this first one is going to uh, make it darker. So, because right now it's kind of kind of grayscale, I want to make it a little bit darker. Probably it's hard to tell. Empty. Yeah. So in the beginning, you kind of see it's a little more darker when it starts off. So everything is like kind of a slightly sharp, um, darker shade of black. Um, what this one does, like I wrote a comment, it, it makes the mask wider, but then inverts it, which I think creates a much better uh, darkening effect. There you go. So now, now the smoke is a, a lot darker, because like I said, I'm looking to try to make black flames from it. So. Um, and like I said, it's it's based on how you do the equation. So if I, let's say, invert the mask and then multiply by what, 0.4, I'm, like, I'm trying to increase it by 40%. Um, everything's dark, so I'm kind of, my, I am actually be pushing things, things in, in the direction that it's, like, it doesn't darken everything. It just darkens small bits of it. Um, in this in this way, you're actually multiplying the mask first because the order of operations is multiplication first and then addition and subtraction second. So here I'm forcing its addition and subtraction to happen first then multiplication. But by default, this happens first. So I'm taking the mask, which is is uh, black to white. I'm forcing all the darker colors to become whiter. Right, so I'm making all the dark, all the, I'm making everything whiter. I'm basically, I'm, I'm I forget, I forget what the Photoshop term was, what was it like a brightening or something? Um, so I'm making it brighter, and then I invert it. So that's the second operation. So in in, in this in, in it, like like I said, I'm making it wider then I invert it. If I'm making it wider and then invert it, I make things blacker. So it's kind of like a Photoshop thing. If you do a lot of Photoshop, you start realizing like little tricks you can do mathematically in um, shaders. And then it's the same same alpha. 
So now, we, like I said, we're, we went from uh, that gr this grayscale, uh, white on black, and we got everything inverted and darkened. So, like I said, like you know, we're getting closer to that black black flame or smoke effect we're going for. All right, so. Let's try this out. Let's see. So uh, let's see. I'm doing the same thing again, but this time I'm doing both to try different effects, see how things look. It's always it's always good to play around with the numbers to see how because you might accidentally hit an effect that looks really good. So since we're dealing with masks, it's very easy to apply color. So once we have our mask um, set up, we can then pick a color and multiply it. So in this instance, I'm trying to multiply our mask value by green. Oh, or no, is it green? RG, yeah, green. Let's if I click refresh. There you go. So anything that's black stays black. Everything else gets a tint of green uh, kind of added to it. So now, we kind of get, now we're kind of creating this kind of like a plasma fire thing going. Um, and again, if I do this the exact opposite, where I was making, you know, making things wider and then inverting it, and this one I'm putting a different color on it. I think I'm putting a purple. Refresh. No, it's still green. But as you can see, there's more black and less green. The green's kind of dark. But uh, it, like I said, it's like it's getting closer to making that black flame type of effect. Because a flame, like if you want to make like an evil flame, like something like uh, Sasuke in Naruto, he has like this flame attack that's black. It's like the black fire. It's supposed to be like it's hotter than regular fire. Uh, all right, so you know we're we're, we're getting good, closer and closer. You know we're adding we added color to it. We're gonna get good at a highlight. Um, so we, now we're going to kind of add some animations to the color. We want the color to change based on age. So in the beginning, I want it to be that black kind of green color. And then as it gets um, older, I want it to be just the green color, I guess. I think that's how I'm doing it. So if it's less than five, I'm doing the dark No, no, no. I, in the beginning, I have it with the green color. And then by the end, I actually, um, yeah, I do the green. Next. Why am I mixing? Okay, I'm not I'm exactly sure. I know it says I'm making it darker and I'm making it lighter. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to make it green to fade. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm changing the mask. That's so why I'm like, why am I doing this? The mask. I'm ch I'm changing how the mask is. I'm making it darker in the beginning, and I'm making it lighter at the end of its lifetime. So I'm just changing how the mask. So I end up doing both equations. Um. Yeah, I end up doing both equations. Uh, that I was doing before, but the, the, on different lifetimes. So. Let's do that. That's our regular. So let's see what it looks like before we apply color to it. So as you see, at near the end of its life, it becomes white instead of staying black. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. So that's so we're changing how it how it behaves during its lifetime. And then over here, we can then apply color to it because, like I said, this is just right now. This is just the mask color, and now we can just multiply our color to it. And I don't know what color that is. So I just want to start adding a blue tint to it. So this way it starts off black with the blue tint and eventually morphs into that color flame. Uh, and then this way. And then we can make it start fading away. So it's still uh, pre-opaque, so we're going to change it so this way it, become, it fades completely away after a certain age. There you go, fades away. Becomes transparent. Yeah, that's what we want. There you go, I see. 
and it's just uh, just using smooth steps. Remember, like I said, if it's you know, it's, uh, in case you don't know what smooth step, it, you kind of be able to pick a range, and it will fade between those two ranges. But anything less than that, the start uh, the starting range is becomes zero, and anything greater becomes one. Um, So yeah, I'm basically one in the beginning of its life. I want between zero and one, subtracting by that age. But if it's at that, it's zero. I'm kind of just transitioning between the two. All right. So okay, and that's basically the animation of our texture. So yeah, that's that's our texture. Now the only thing we got to do is. Let's make make it into particles. Uh, you know what? Let's let's this that's not that's not doing that yet. All right. So now that we kind of f fixed up our texture to kind of animate or to basically the, how the the a particle is supposed to look like in its lifetime, now we can start animating a little bit. So the first thing we can do is we can then add back the scale. So let's see. Let's start making it smaller. As it gets older, it gets smaller. See? And each one has like a random age. So there you go. So that's our scale. Um, and then from here, we can give it its starting position. So now, now it's no longer in origin. It's in a different starting position. Every time we refresh, it, it starts somewhere else. So that's where it starts. And then here, we can then start moving it. Start moving it. And uh, where it's supposed to go during its lifetime. There you go. So now we have a moving particle. It's animating. It's changing color. It's fading. There you go. Pretty neat. Now, that's pretty much all we do for animating. We just, uh, it's a scale, it's starting position, and it's velocity. That's really all that's to this um, animation. Now, what makes this into something great is we, let's say we add 500 particles. Click refresh. And there we go. Ah. And there's my, f this is really actually my second or third attempt of making black flame. Um, it's not great. Um, if It'd be great if you can blend better, but I just, it's, I'm having a hard time getting things to blend just right. Um, so the last thing I do is show you what my final, final attempt was uh, at making black flames. I probably have like more than one attempt, do I? A whole different attempt. Um, so, comment this out. Comment all that out. So we got uh, this one. I guess uh, creates our mask. Um, apply color. This one is a little something extra. I added more color to it. This one kind of creates like a highlight. Let me leave that comment that out. Um, and that gives our, our lifespan. Uh, what's this one? This is another attempt? Or this is my first original attempt? This might be our first original attempt. Uh, if I click refresh. Now this time you kind of see, I kind of made things more light at the bottom. Just by some moving numbers around and it's darker on the top. I don't know what, how I did that. <laughs> like I said, I just kept playing with numbers. Um, yeah, it's it's just these are like three lines of code. Uh, I think you know what I took away that lifetime thing and just just changed it where I have mask. Where's mask? So yeah, it's just mask times. Um, 
a smoothing effect between five and eight. So, so yeah, I just changed the smoothing and there's no time change at all. The only time change is for the alpha. Um, and then just keep an eye, see, now see how this thing is? I added an extra additional color to add highlights. So I, uh, if, if we're closer, if I'm like between eight and one, I want to make a one. So I'm adding more color. Like if, if the pixel is somewhere between eight and one, like since I made everything so dark, I want to turn everything, I want to make it brighter. So you'll see all there's highlights in there. So now you can, now, now that's what I'm, that, that little bit of code just adding on adds a little bit of highlights, like the, the darkest part, I guess, or the, originally, the original mask, the, the widest part of the mask, I kind of, I kind of just push it through to kind of create that little um, effect. And there you go. That's uh, a little bit better than the previous version. Like I said, it's, you change time, you know, like you play with time and you play with colors and, you kind of figure it out. Um, there's also maybe sorting uh, that can be added to kind of this way things uh, draw and in, in, um, maybe closer to the camera or something like that. That might improve things a little bit. Um, when you're dealing with alpha blending, it's it's, a, it's kind of tricky to get things just right. Um, where the guy's tutorial, he was using uh, an alpha blend of one makes this kind of easier but you can't you can't create this effect very easy at all in that because black becomes um, like transparent um, God people keep calling me <laughs> uh, so yeah that's it uh, there's not much else to it it's mostly all shader stuff and I, I wanted to show you guys kind of like the steps of how I, I want to go about it you know I just took a copy and then just start tweaking it. Once I was kind of good with that, I made another copy and I tweaked it some more. So this way I can always go back and 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 do things. And as you can see, like I said, and I tried again, I took away certain things. I kind of just started over again and and start tweaking numbers again. And it's like, you know what, let me add highlights. And just, all you need to do is, you know, you know, do things like that. So yeah, so the really the real big takeaway is how to animate textures. So if you want to animate textures, like you can very easily uh, Google. Just go to images.google.com. All you have to do is do like animated sprite sheet, and you can find you can you can make a bunch of sprites of like Mega Man, you know, running around. You know, just just uh, just make this into a nice even grid that makes it easier to animate. Like this one is a nice grid, uh, and you can also find other flames. Uh, fire sprite sheet, uh, and there's some you can buy. You can buy, uh, I guess, from Vector Stock. Um, so, so yeah, you can go online and just Google for sprite sheets of different things. Um, and some of them are free. Some are, you know, not free. <laughs> you know, you, you can get away. Here's here's one. This one's pretty good by the looks of it. It's it's transparent, so. It's alpha has a lot of alpha in it, but yeah, you can go find online uh, any sprite sheet you want. It doesn't have to be just fire. Uh, how about electricity? There you go. At some point, we got to deal with lightning, so I'm gonna end up just doing that, just searching for uh, a lightning sprite sheet, and you can just animate it. You know, you got yeah, you got a lot of different things. You got this one looks kind of neat. Oh, uh, you got this one looks pretty cool. That that looks that looks like a, a nice uh, one uh, to mess around with. Um, is it? You got this one's pretty cool. This is like a, I don't know what the hell this is. It's like a meteor. This this is this kind of neat. Take this image and you can uh, make a meteor uh, texture, I guess, uh, or or sprite very easily. I uh, game sprites. So, yeah, the sky's the limit. You know, you can go online. You can make them yourself. You can pay someone to, to do it. You can just Google it. You'll find them. Um, there's a bunch of great sprite packs out there if you're willing to pay, you know, five bucks for. Um, 
you know, at some point I want to buy some sprite sheets that are really neat. The problem is I can't use them for the tutorials because I can't can't give them out for free. So yeah, I have to make do with what I can do for free when it comes to these uh, video tutorials. Um, unless there's some people out there that want to give me a free sprite sheet as an advertisement to their stuff, go for it. That'd be great. Give me one free good texture. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm done scrolling around <laughs> for textures. Once I start looking for textures, like I just sit there for I can sit there for like an hour trying to find really good textures. Um, so yeah, that's really the big takeaway: uh, animating um, textures. Uh, the equation to do it can be pretty much used over and over again. Um, just change the grid size. Um, as long as you, if you, as long as you fill in, fill out the width of uh, the of your image, uh, this will work perfectly. And, and like I said, you just use the the lifetime value. Where is the lifetime value? Right here. Oh no, wait. Where's always there? It is C, C the cell. Um, you know, sixteen. You know, how many? How many? It's like basically how many pixels? Like if you have like thirty frames, this is basically the frames for the animation. This has sixteen frames in the animation. If you find a sprite sheet that has thirty frames, then it's like thirty times age. Um, and you can speed up the age by changing life's time, and you can make the animation faster if you want. Um, so yeah, that's like that's a big takeaway. You could do that, and 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 all the work we did with um, masks. Because today we actually really played with masks a lot. Like we were, we were, we were you know, inverting them, adding them together, multiplying, applying colors. You know, um, you know, like when it would, the highlight effect, right? You no, know, I, I added the color, then I, you know, I added um, the highlight to it based on certain values in, in the mask. So you masks were a really great value, a really great useful thing to do to think in that. Manner, it's kind of like a paintbrush. That's where masks are. Uh, in any 3D application you use, a mask is used as a paintbrush. Or I should say, every paintbrush is really just a mask image that you use as a template to um, do whatever you want with it. So, definitely, you know, like if you ever see like a cool texture, think about it how can I use it as a mask? Because you might be able to do some really neat effects with it. Um, and it doesn't, and then any texture you find doesn't have to be um, a color. You know, like you can just. Um, grayscale it yourself. Uh, I think if you do like an average of, if you take RGB and I think you average the three values out, you can kind of get kind of like the black and white uh, effect for it. I think that's, I, I'm sure, I don't know what the equation is. I think that's the equation. It's the average of RGB it gives you kind of like the grayscale version, color. Uh, if I'm wrong, just Google it. I'm sure you'll find the equation very easily. Uh, or you can do what I did, just put it in the application and um, just grayscale it and just use the, the leveler so you can make things a little darker and brighter um, in Photoshop or GIMP, whatever application you're currently using for uh, modifying images. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for today. Um, I'm going to not do effects for another couple of videos, I want to go back to armatures. So in the next video, we're going to programmically animate an armature. So instead of importing animations, we're going to programmically make animations. We're going to we have we're going to use math, and we're going to use code, and we're going to animate a bones uh, of a skeleton uh, the way we kind of interpret it. It and it's going to be a really good one. Uh, it's fun. Right? I finished it last night, so it's going to be great. Uh, I can't wait to do that video. That might be fun. So if you like, please like and subscribe. Um, GitHub has all the st all the files. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, I, I respond fairly quickly. And uh, hope you enjoy this tutorial. And um, see you guys at the next video.